Well, hello and welcome to the Armory. My name is Troy Rockers, and I am here today to teach you deliverance. Amen? Jesus said to set the captives free, set at liberty those who are oppressed, and we are to do that. We are to walk on the earth as his ambassador in love and light and shattering the darkness on this earth. Amen? And setting the captives free. So, the saints, unfortunately, need to be taught. Um, now, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things, but why not learn from another man or woman of God who's already walked that walk to a degree, right? And he'll still teach you new things as you go through this. But I'm going to open with prayer. And then today, this is Deliverance Class, uh, Deliverance 101, Class 7. I'm going to be speaking to you about the preparation of the person, person being ministered to. They need to be prepared for deliverance. Amen. And you, as the minister or the one that's going to be doing deliverance, need to be able to instruct them on certain things, okay, so that they can get free and stay free, more importantly, staying free. So let's open up with prayer, and we'll begin. Heavenly Father, thank you for all things. You're a mighty God. What a wonderful God. Thank you for giving us life, Father. Thank you for creating us. Thank you, Lord, for all things. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Jesus, praise be to you. Praise be to you. Praise be to you. Thank you for going to the cross, King Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, I ask you to strengthen the saints out there already in the war, Father God, doing your will laboring for you, Jesus. I pray you strengthen them and give them endurance, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray for every scale, veil, and weapon the enemies put over any of these saints to not receive the truth, to be pulled down off them now in Jesus Christ's name, so that they know how to minister to people and to set the captives free for your glory, Jesus. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. So, I spoke to you last time about the minister's preparation for going into battle um, into deliverance ministry or setting someone free, you need to be prepared. Now I want to speak to the person being ministered to. And you, first and foremost, should be delivered, as I spoke to you in the last one. You know, hypocrite first, pull the plank out of your own eye so you can see clearly the speck that's in your brother's eye. So this goes for you too, if you haven't been through deliverance. And if you need help, reach out to us. We minister to people all over the world through Skype or FaceTime, through this video, uh, uh, live video, Jesus will set people free. So, first and foremost, you as the um, minister um, needs to make need to make sure that the person wanting deliverance or desiring it is ready to be free and stay free. Okay, they must have a relationship with Jesus Christ, born again Christian, because if they're not the demons are just going to come right back and reinvade them. So first of all, they should be a born-again Christian. Amen? Now, unless the Lord's telling you to set somebody free so that they can accept Christ, God can do things in any order, right? But for the most part, you're going to be ministering to you know, believers already. Amen? So, the person you're ministering to needs to understand that Jesus is the healer and deliverer, not the person ministering to them. Okay, it's Jesus ministering through you. We don't want them to start idolizing you and putting you up on a pedestal thinking, you know, you're the deliverer. It's Christ in you doing the deliverance session. So they need to understand that, that it's Jesus. And they, the person, need to be um, praying to the Lord in advance, asking for deliverance and freedom, asking Jesus to heal their heart. Okay, so make sure you're instructing the person in advance to seek Jesus to be in the Word of God, to be praying daily. They need to be praying daily. They need to be in the Word of God. They should be taking communion regularly because all these things weaken the devil, okay? Those are things they need to do in advance. Um, if they're Now, whenever you actually begin ministry session with them, another thing I'm going to point out here briefly, and maybe ahead of uh, my order, I, maybe I shouldn't say this now, but I'm going to, um, if they are busy praying the whole time during the deliverance session, it can be difficult for the ministry to take place. In other words, they need to trust Jesus, trust you, and get out of the way and let Jesus heal them and deliver them, especially if they've got a broken heart. If the core person is sitting here praying, 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 oh, Jesus, Jesus, set me free, set me free. Oh, Lord, give this person discernment, knowledge, wisdom. Da, 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 da. Then their broken heart can't come up then the, the demons can't manifest if the core person's talking all the time. They just need to be instructed by you to rest in the Lord, to just trust Jesus. Ask him to deliver you and get out of the way. Okay, that's what needs to happen uh, during uh, the beginning of this, whenever you're 
actually going into the delivered session speaking to them about what's going to happen, what's going to take place. Now, um, understand also here that the person you're ministering to, the recipient, must be ready to walk out a life of repentance serving the Lord, right? Because we don't want to make monsters out of people. You know, they need to understand that this is serious stuff. Casting a devil out, um, that thing's going to return back to its house, and it's going to stand over here and speak to the person's mind. If they give into those thoughts, boom, it's going to come in with seven more possibly, and we don't want that, right? So educate them on they must stay sinless. And if they do sin, repent immediately, binding spirits that may have entered, and cast them out. They need to understand how to do self-deliverance. Everybody should know how to do self-deliverance, and it's the same order as deliverance. If you sin, repent. Break any curse. Bind the spirits and weapons. Command them out. It's that simple. Should be. Right? So, next, educate them on the doors the enemy has used to place them in bondage. It's important for people to understand and know how they got in bondage so that they don't do it again. Does that make sense? The fr and I've already spoke to you about this in uh, the Deliverance 101 classes, I believe, maybe 1 through 5. But it, the five primary doors, sin, unforgiveness, uh, generational curses, ungodly soul ties, heartbreak are the five primary doors. And then there's two, there's other doors, tattoos and cursed objects. So 2 Corinthians 6.14 says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? So the person you're going to minister to needs to understand that certain relationships that they've had may need to change for them to stay free. They may be hanging out with people who are non-believers, who, you know, are sending them witchcraft through soul ties. They may be, you know, in relationships that aren't even of God right now. I mean, maybe it's a person who you're ministering to is single, but yet they're in a relationship with another person, and they're in a sexual relationship. Well, that's fornication. You should not minister to that person. They're not ready for it. they got to stop fornicating. they got to... Present their body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Amen. Uh, otherwise, you know, you cast out some spirits and they go fornicate, which is actually, I'm going to give you a testimony here. Whenever I first learned this stuff and the Lord was putting all this in my heart, I made a few mistakes. Because of my zeal to set people free and want to see people free and seeing people in bondage, I wanted people set free. So there was a young man that came to me one time and, uh, he needed, he needed deliverance, and he probably still does today. But anyway, um, he uh, came to me, and he had had depression all of his life, this and that. He went to a Catholic priest, and, and I said, well, and he knew he had demons, and his family knew he had demons. He actually had committed suicide and made it, but the uh, stepdad happened to show up and res um, gave him CPR, and he brought him back to life. So anyway, to make a long story short, I ministered to this young man without going to the Lord first and asking him, um, I simply asked the, the person, are you ready? Do you want to be delivered? And like, he's like, yes. But I didn't ask the Lord if he was ready. So I cast this, these spirits out, and not very many, just cast some out. There's some generational heartbreak that went with the Lord. He felt wonderful, was, felt great afterwards. Um, I didn't see him because it wasn't a, it wasn't a session that was set up uh, through ministry. It was uh, set up through uh, my work. It's kind of how it rolled out. But anyway... I heard about three months later um, from his uh, family members that he was in jail, incarcerated. I was like, what happened? And uh, they had told me that, you know, he had a girlfriend um, and was having sex with her and this and that. Well, that right there was a door. He started sinning again. Thus, demons came back. So, my the point of the story here is make sure they're ready to cut relationships they need to do, make sure the person's ready to stay free. You know, there may be relationships that that the person is going to have to um, stop to stay free and be free, right? I had another uh, deliverance session one time where we ministered to a couple who um, had spirits of Hinduism, if I remember correctly. Yeah, uh, no, I can't remember. It's either Hinduism or Muslim spirits. I think they're Muslim spirits. I can't remember. One of the two. This was... I don't know, five, six years ago. They had uh, spirits in them that didn't come through their generational bloodline. They came in because they had friends that were Muslim or Hindu, and they had attended their wedding. And this 
initiation, them going to that wedding, those they're being tied to them so strongly, open the door for these spirits to enter them through soul ties. Once again, another relationship that should have they should have went to the Lord about it and said, Are we supposed to still be friends with these people? Because they were Christians. Yes, we're supposed to minister the gospel to them, obviously all people, but there's a difference between yoked with somebody and ministering the gospel. So that's my point here, okay? Make sure you're instructing the people you're ministering to to um, to cut you know ties with people that they're supposed to that the Lord's telling them. Um, teach them about broken heart parts, um, how those parts need to come up for Jesus to heal them and that they need to get out of the way and let him have the brokenness. Teach them about tattooing and how their body is not their own but a living sacrifice to Christ now, right? And that they're made in the image of God. Um, you can go to scriptures. You can review my, you can review my previous uh, deliverance classes, 101 classes. That's like class five. Maybe I spoke about the, yeah, it is five. I spoke about tattoos and cursed objects, and there's scriptures that reference this. Teach them about cursed objects in their possession, how they need to be removed, because those can give a legal right to the devil to attack you, to sit in their flesh or soul, or just you know wreak havoc in their finances or their home. Amen. You need to be instructing these these people on these doors that I've already spoken to you about in the previous deliverance classes, but you need to educate them about them because they need to know how to stay free. So to make sure the person is uh, praying daily prayers of warfare, prayers speaking to any part of their heart that is broken, that they want to be healed and whole, meaning this. Um, whenever you go to minister to somebody to heal the brokenhearted, it sets them up for much quicker deliverance if the person is already decreeing and declaring that they want to be healed by Jesus and delivered. So they can be praying prayers in advance, saying, um, I speak to any and all part of my heart that's broken. I want to be healed and whole in Jesus' name. Any part of my heart that has unforgiveness towards others, I forgive them on your behalf in Jesus' name. Trust Jesus. He wants to heal me. I want to be healed and whole. Obey my will in Jesus' name. That little prayer right there, those statements spoken out loud, that, that sets the heart up for much quicker deliverance um, than if it's not stated, I've learned. Because there may be broken parts of the heart that have anger and unforgiveness, and they don't want to forgive the person. But because the core stated that already, they forgive them much quicker and easier, and it, they just go to the Lord and are healed. So anyway, uh, where was I at? Prayer, speaking to any part of the heart that is broken. I just went over that. Guarding of and renewing the mind. The person needs to know that they need to guard their mind and renew it. They need to crucify the flesh and remove strongholds because these are areas that the enemy has set up encampments in their flesh, mind, and soul for 10, 20, 30, 40 years on earth that aren't of God. And if, unless these strongholds are broken off the person's mind or their flesh, they're going to be weaknesses where the enemy is going to hit them at and the person's going to walk in agreement with it and boom, then demons are going to come back in. As an example, let's say a person struggled with fear all their life. Well, they probably should be speaking 2 Corinthians, right? Uh, no, excuse me, 2 Timothy 1, 7. God's not giving me a spirit of fear, but a power and love and sound mind. They should be breaking down those strongholds of fear, giving them to the Lord, all their fear, right? Understanding who they are in Christ. Um, Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the miracles of mercies of God, excuse me, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So this scripture speaks of us transforming our mind, because the enemy attacks you here first. That's where he, in, the, the entrance into you is always here. He hits you with well, the flesh can too, but it's always the mind where it starts. You know, even a thought of lust. Does it come from the heart? Probably so. But the mind has to be involved with it, right? So sometimes these strongholds need to be broken and renewed into Christ, into Christ, prior to even beginning ministry with the person. Remember that. Go to the, uh, always, 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 you ministers who are going to prepare these people, always be in prayer about, are they ready? And if they're not ready, speak to them. Show them, tell them what the Lord's telling you. Uh, many occasions, even we've even started deliverance on people, and we're into it two or three sessions, and then the Lord just shuts it down. He tells us, my wife and I, that you're not to minister to them anymore, or at least not right now, because they're not prepared for more, or because 
they have fallen into cares of the world. They're busy with their job, their family, you know, and then I speak that to the person and they're like, yeah, you're right. I haven't been praying. I haven't been reading my Bible. I've been busy with work, with school, my family. I haven't been focusing on the Lord. Well, there you go. They need to be prepared and ready. But, but in this year context, they need to be making sure that they're breaking down the flesh, renewing their mind in the mind of Christ. Corinthians 10.3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity, into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And that was verse 4 and 5. So the scripture says here, we need to break those strongholds off our mind. So you need to prepare these people and tell them, you've got to break the strongholds. I see strongholds on you of fear, of rejection, of lust, of anger, of strife, whatever they are, whatever the Holy Spirit's showing you, the minister, relay this to them. If they're really wanting free, they're going to accept it and they're going to say, you're right, I'm still walking in anger too much, I'm still walking in lust. You know, some people may have an issue with uh, pornography and they're masturbating. Well, you shouldn't even begin to minister to them until... The Lord tells you to, and they've broken that stronghold off their flesh. Amen? Because if not, it's going to be an open door for the enemy to come right back to them, and they're going to be worse than they were before. Okay, so I went over a lot of stuff in a short period of time. Hopefully you've got all that. Review this as you need to. Go back and watch it again. Take notes. Um, there's 16 minutes of video here, and I don't want to go too long. But for the preparation of the person receiving deliverance, they need to be educated on the five doors. They need to break the strongholds off their mind and their flesh, renewing them into Christ, right? And they need to understand that they should be praying warfare prayers daily for their freedom and then, you know, yielding to the Lord Jesus to minister to them. Amen? Amen. Well, God bless you. I pray that you are blessed with this Deliverance Class 101.7. I'll be coming back with more classes. Uh, I pray. I feel like I'm going to move on the weapons that we use during deliverance next and then the actual process of deliverance. So be blessed today. I hope that uh, you go out and set the captives free and um, you're walking in the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless.